Uh, my name is Aaron Chiriot. I serve the people of Kericho as their senator. This is my third term. I joined the Senate in early 2016, uh, having contested in a by-election after our then senator was appointed uh, to be a cabinet secretary. Uh, then ever since, uh, I have been uh, their senator. Uh, this term, uh, my coalition uh, proposed me and the members of our coalition agreed with the party uh, leadership that I serve as a majority leader of the Senate. Uh, so that's what I'm currently doing. I am uh, passionate about politics and its ability uh, to bring about positive change in our society. I know for a fact that uh, many young people uh, don't see the connection between uh, politics and their daily struggles. But I can tell them uh, without a doubt that there is a direct correlation between the politics of the day and your life struggles. That uh, if you actively participate in politics, then you're actively engaging in making your life uh, better, one way or the other. If you choose to look the other way, you're looking the other way from an opportunity to make your life better. If you actively participate, uh, vote in the right uh, leaders, support the right uh, policies, then you have made your contribution in trying to make your own life better and that of your fellow uh, countrymen and the uh, global population uh, as well. So I am glad to have this opportunity to serve as a member of parliament because that's where all the major uh, policy decisions are made and uh, all the laws of the land are, are debated and uh, eventually passed and ratified uh, into law. I follow your conversations mostly on uh, Twitter. Uh, I see the kind of things uh, that you people do, uh, engaging young people and making them politically work. Uh, to be aware of the political situations, the prevailing uh, conditions in the country, the need for them to actively engage. I saw the kind of um, uh, forums you engaged in in the run-up to the general elections last year, just trying to get people, young people, understand what politics is about. Because unfortunately, many of them view politics as just an, uh, an, an elite sport of either elders or certain class of people. They don't have any uh, particular connection. And in fact, many of them, uh, despite registering as voters, they eventually never turned up to vote for very flimsy reason that uh, either I'm in school and I registered to vote elsewhere and things like that. Yet, uh, when you see the elderly population who uh, come to a place of realization of the importance of politics in our society, uh, take the journey uh, hundreds of kilometers either up country or even upwards to Nairobi and other far flung places to go and vote it's because of the importance they attach to what a vote is and actively engaging in politics. It's your voice uh, for the next five years. So I appreciate what you guys at CSA Place are doing. Uh, the fact that you are uh, pricking the interest of young people in politics, helping them to understand that uh, this is about your life, not anybody else, not even your brother, your sister, your neighbor. It's about you personally and helping them to appreciate issues differently because unfortunately many of them uh, see uh, politics from the prism of what the media is saying or what they've heard from friends, but choose to look away. They don't take time to read the constitution, uh, distinguish between the different uh, political points, understand what is uh, our governance uh, structure as a country, what are the different roles of the various elected leaders, why they should vote this way or the other way. But because of the interaction that you bring here at Siesa Place, I see many of them begin to understand and appreciate and even uh, more importantly, hold the elected leaders to account and say, you're supposed to be doing this. Why are you not doing A, B, C, D? We demand an explanation from you. That has come from the conversation that Siasa Place uh, continues to have with young people and I celebrate you for that. Uh, number one is uh, financial, of course. It's the biggest hurdle that many young people face. Uh, what I did is that I reached out to many young people uh, who are my friends and just asked them to give whatever they could, 1,000, 50 bob, 10,000, 100,000, those who could. I think my biggest donor, donors were two people only who gave me, I think, half a million each. The rest was in small donations from friends who could keep you going, uh, 2,000 here, 5,000. But also uh, to overcome uh, that financial barrier because most of that finances goes to actually the logistics of uh, running a campaign, fueling vehicles, uh, paying your campaign team. And uh, sometimes when you go and meet people, 
uh, people will raise issues and say, oh, we have a problem here. If you want to be a leader, demonstrate even by just sorting this one problem that is here. We have a kid who's sick and as a village, you can't raise money to take them to hospital. So one of the things that I did is that uh, I got many young people to be part of my campaign team and to work voluntarily to know that uh, we're just uh, pushing as a team. On the, photo, on the, post, on the uh, uh, campaign poster is my photo. But as we are one team, we rise together, we fall together. If we succeed, we'll find a way of taking care of each other. I'm glad that uh, many years down the line, at least I've been able to sort most of them and find them uh, bearing in life courtesy of the investment that they initially made by agreeing to work for free. Uh, so that's how I overcame that challenge, of course, and uh, how I equally branded my campaign. Uh, I referred to myself as a, the young man uh, in my local language. So that already uh, gave the impression to the voters that I was speaking to that please don't ask me the difficult questions. Uh, then I wasn't married, I didn't have a house. The difficult questions that people will say, oh, we want, uh, where is your home? Who is your wife? And blah, blah. I said, please, excuse me. Understand that I'm just a young man of 28. Uh, I'm just trying to put life together. But I have a vision and I think I know what it takes to lead you. Give me the opportunity, ignore what the traditional barriers uh, to entry into political office uh, always are. And I'm glad they heeded that call. I think uh, I can self-assess and say they have reaped uh, benefits out of that investment that they did in me. It is uh, what taught me what politics is about and what people expect and how to interact with people, how to manage expectations, how to excite a crowd, how to uh, draw curiosity, how to build a brand. Uh, I learned the basics of politics while at the university and uh, that is what eventually helped me. In fact, many of the networks that I used eventually to run for a county-wide seats were friends that I built from either high school or from university. People that already knew you and they had seen you as a, as a, as a political leader because that's where you first show your, your talents and abilities. You know, the, big, the biggest referral is by people who know you. People who can call up somebody and say, hey, by the way, we will say, come on, I don't any chance. I know him, he has a capability. Uh, so that's the platform. Because to later introduce yourself, and if you don't have the buy-in of even your uh, friends that you normally hang out with, then you're dead on arrival. So the thing is to be, to be real and to start as early as possible. It is out of those things that I learned as a politician in campus that helped me uh, to shape my thinking and abilities and know what needs to be done. It's unfortunate that we find ourselves in the situation that we are in. We are still stuck partially in the 2022 election. Uh, elections are increasingly becoming difficult across the world. Uh, this is not just a Kenyan phenomena. I believe you see the struggles that even uh, uh, more established democracies like in the UK and the Americas uh, continue to have where after an election uh, there's a new trend that is emerging of uh, leaders that uh, uh, refuse to concede uh, uh, to an election result and they raise baseless claims of either electoral fraud or one reason or the other why they didn't succeed and just to sustain and keep their momentum is a, is a, is a ploy to, to, to keep your support base. You know, many people vote in the next election depending on how you performed in the previous one. Everybody wants to be on the winning side. So how do you justify to your supporters and say, uh, we didn't make it last time, but I think this time we're going to make it. So this new breed of politician uh, imagine that the only way to sustain a constituency is by going back to the people that uh, believed in you and say, guys, we made it, but they stole it away. Uh, you saw that with Donald Trump and you're increasingly seeing it even uh, here locally, which is rather an unfortunate uh, scenario because we expect that uh, we get to a point where after an election is done, we trust the independence of our electoral commission and we say, OK, I, did, I came short this time, but I believe next time I'm going to make it. So the challenge is on us as a political leaders. Uh, leadership to find ways uh, through which we can uh, heal uh, the country and bridge the divide and say while there are things we don't agree with there are certain traditions that we cannot uh, break away the fact that we begin to look at each other not just as um, uh, this tribe or this political divide but as Kenyans we are losing that sense uh, of being one people uh, because of our politics and that's a greater uh, challenge that we, we continue and I think it's on the basis of that that we have the current situation where now we have this conversation that's going on in Parliament and saying 
We may not agree on everything. There are things that we'll disagree with, but let us try and find common ground. It's not, it's not, after, it's not accurate to say after the election, because if you look at the parties that uh, Azimia are contesting and saying they had been with us, they long left Azimia. Maendeleo Chapchap, their party leader, Alfred uh, Mutua, as early as May, three, four months before the election, said, I don't understand these things that you guys are trying to force us. So it's a pre-election coalition. The same can be said of uh, the one of uh, Amazon King. Uh, what's the name? I, the name disappears, the party from uh, the coast, PA, you know? Uh, PAA, the party from, uh, from the coast. The same can be said from uh, Maendeleo, uh, chapter of Alfred Mutua, and even uh, it's only UDM which eventually came and said that arrangement that we had uh, with these people, nothing was committed uh, to them on our side. So the contestation by Azimio, remember the finding by the speaker, is that that agreement was obtained in fraud because the party leaders gave the confession and said we were invited to KICC and remember the uh, prevailing political environment then that we just signed on a document which nobody had the courtesy to tell us what exactly uh, it was about and said it was explained to us that further we shall engage in a coalition agreement which was never signed and that's it's on the basis of that that we eventually reached that particular uh, position so that is completely different to a handshake where after an election a president has been elected uh, by use of either violence or whatever means uh, somebody stages the kind of uh, messy situation that we've had in Nairobi the last few weeks and then you say that in the interest of peace let us just talk to each other then we'll share gov government so what is the what is the what, what, what why, why then go to an election if after the election the two key players will eventually agree and say Let's just split this government. I thought they are different ideologies. As Emil campaigned on a particular platform, they believe there is a way they believe the country needs to be managed, which was completely different to what we sold as Kenya Kwanzaa. And that's why we are insisting that uh, for purity of our politics, let us Emil take up their role as the opposition uh, team. Uh, we are not averse to listening to ideas that are progressive from them, because that's our nature as a country. We can listen to each other. But what we don't want is that this animal called the handshake that got us into the message that we continue where we, we had complete overrun of uh, uh, public institutions we got ourselves in the kind of uh, mess that we are in economically because of a lack of a functional opposition that's what we are opposed to of course we are in a difficult place economically there is no hiding about that but remember it's because of the mature uh, policy decision that we've taken where we've said we must now begin to tighten our belts and live within our means Otherwise, we had the option of continuing borrowing, then we crash the economy to keep people happy. But we have chosen to do the mature thing, which is what any ordinary family does. There's no difference, by the way, between public finance and private finance. The same way, if you find yourself in a difficult situation where you begin, say, earning less than what you currently earn, you downgrade your life. You move maybe to a smaller house. If you had a car that used to fuel, you switch to public transport. You know, you switch the places that you normally go to until your fortunes change. That's what mature countries need to do. Sometimes people do the opposite, which is what I see even individuals do. They begin to borrow. And before you know it, you are indebted to all your friends. People are running away from you because you are unable to manage your finances. That's what unfortunately had happened to Kenya. But we are now in this place where we have said, good people, let us live within our means. No more. Uh, unnecessarily uh, borrowing, we reduce on our fiscal uh, deficit, we ensure that as a country we begin to prudently manage our resources and that's why you're seeing the kind of challenge. But it's only for a short time, yet the gains will be long term. It will give us stability, it will give us the freedom that you're looking for as a country. Where three, four, five years down the line, we'll have more money for development because we'll have paid off most of our debts and we'll have, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a temporary pain for a long term pleasure. Otherwise, we could have chosen the reverse of numbing the pain uh, uh, temporarily, but have a long-term pain. That uh, program is ongoing, dig digitization of government programs. Uh, many of them are being onboarded on the platform uh, uh, that was launched a few months ago. Previously, I think they had onboarded only about 100, but you are increasingly seeing many other government services being added. Uh, birth certificate and uh, others so that 
instead of going to queue in a chief's office or in a public, uh, I don't know, uh, DO's office to get many uh, basic documents, you now uh, are able to access it digitally. Of course, I've seen people complain about a convenience fee, but they're forgetting you're paying only 50 or 100 bob to save on time and uh, all the conveniences that will have come uh, with it. I believe once successfully executed at the national government, the same can be replicated. Our counties can actually on board on the same, either by use of the same technology or something slightly different because the services that counties provide is uh, different. So uh, we are in a good place and I believe the same can be uh, replicated in our counties. I want to tell them be courageous, don't be limited by the things that don't work Pick even one thing that ticks the box for you and run with it and say, I know out of maybe the 10 requirements of what it takes to be uh, either a member of parliament, an MCA, or whatever position that you're, uh, of responsibility that you're looking for, I can maybe tick only one or two. That is enough. Don't look at what doesn't work. Work with what you have and have the courage, have the vision, uh, be filled with purpose, and eventually you will achieve it. Uh, don't be held back by maybe one or two things that you feel uh, I would have done this, but because I don't have this or the other, I can't do it. Uh, be active, engage, learn, and you don't have even to be elected to speak up. Uh, sometimes all it takes either a Twitter handle uh, or even public uh, community organizations uh, for you to just organize your community, uh, be an advocate for a better environment, be an advocate for more prudent resources, a use of resources in your local school. There are many facets of politics. It's not just about the elective positions that people look at. Uh, politics is about governance, ensuring that things work right. You can actively participate, even in your own, say, estate welfare group that brings people together and ensure that the environment is clean, that you support each other when people are going through difficulties, that the local school or the local dispensary is being run uh, properly. Even that is a position of responsibility. Begin somewhere, just know what is expected of you and run with it. Thank you very much.